Hey guys, welcome back. This is Sean Ray, and today I'm going to be answering the question that I recently got from a subscriber on the channel, which is what is the method that I use and what's the process that I use to buy my own personal homes? And so, good timing because I normally buy my investment homes in like December or January. And so, I'm going to go through that today with you guys because it's coming on December and January. I'm filming this video right now in November. And so I'm gonna just walk you through the process. We're gonna do a screen share, that way you can see everything. I'm gonna do the search live with you guys and go through my reactions and why I wanna do certain homes or not other homes. So if you like this kind of footage, make sure to like, subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff that you guys are used to. Make sure to hit the notification bell. If you don't know how to do that by now and you're watching a YouTube video, then welcome to YouTube. Everyone's needing you to do that if you like their video. Okay, cool, make sure to comment down below if you have any questions on anything I'm about to go over. Okay, let's switch to the screen share, screen share, screen share. Okay guys, so now we're at the screen share. So this is the MLS, uh, this is the Dallas MLS. If you guys are in different, different states, then you're gonna have different kind of uh, systems. So <clears throat> I do active and coming soon. And so active is gonna be what is currently on the market, coming soon is what's about to come on the market. I like to do single family and townhomes. Uh, they do really well on Airbnb. Townhomes, that's a caveat though, is that I want you to make sure it has no HOAs. HOAs equals death in Airbnb. Also, pools are a pain in the ass. So if you have an option to get rid of your pools, then do not have any pools on your property because they will drive you nuts. Uh, photo count, I like to do five or more, and the reason why is because anything less than five, then typically it's gonna be a new build or a total renovation, and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for specifically homes that are already good as they are, and they just require a little bit of lipstick on the pig to make that thing sexy. Okay, so price. The price is 200,000 to 375. That's only applicable to my area of town in Dallas, <clears throat> in the areas I like to invest in. And so anything over that is gonna be difficult to rent it out at a profit. So that's why I do 200 to 375. I recommend in your markets, make sure to find the average. The average in Dallas is like 236 to $250,000 or so. And so try to keep it around that, that rate. Don't go too crazy. Uh, I like to have four bedrooms or more. I don't try to do it at five. If I do five, it's gonna have to be unique. What, I, what would be ideal is a four bedroom house with an ADU, which is accessory dwelling unit or additional dwelling unit. <clears throat> and so what that would do is if I can get four plus an extra one out there, then I can rent them out separately on Airbnb. And in the future, it would go really good for traditional rental as well. Uh, three would be a good option for traditional standard residential real estate for just standard long-term leases. But since we're doing Airbnb, let's jump to four. Most standard leases are gonna be three bedrooms though, so keep that in mind. Uh, total bathroom, I like three plus. When you're doing traditional renter, rentals, you can do two plus, but since we're gonna have potentially 15 to 20 people spending the night at your Airbnb, you're gonna need that extra bathroom. And then also you're gonna want some extra space, that way if they want their events, you can make some extra event money. 1,600 square feet plus, 1,600 is still small, I want 2,000, but that at least gives us the option to see what is available. Speaking of what is available, this is what the Dallas market looks like right now. There's nothing available. So that's horrible. <clears throat> I really want to invest in this area, in this area, and you know anything over here is good. Uh, anything right here would work. And then also, of course, anything here. If you buy anything in that price I just told you about looks good in this area, then you're winning, winning. Um, and then, Anything around here or here I like. I could go up here, but not so much. I could go over Las Colinas, but not so much. And I think this area is really building out strong right now. I really believe in this area. So we just sold a house right there. It's just going up the market with Ray, which you're gonna learn about Ray in the next couple of videos. We're gonna do a tour of that home that is just about to go live. So that's over there and that is killing it. He hasn't even, he's, he has his first tour or his first client this weekend coming in and um, he's getting books stacked heavy and he hasn't even put pictures of his furniture up yet. Um, this is a little too far west. A little too far west. And so pretty much anything over here and then uh, not so much. 
I already have one of my properties is here, one of my properties is here. So I don't want to overstack all my investments in one area of town. So at this point, it doesn't look like there's anything on the market that I'm super excited about. Uh, I did go tour this one. This one looks really cool, but um, we had an issue with the <clears throat> we had an issue with the owner. He was kind of an asshole, and so we're not going to help him out and buy his house. Um, Okay, let's see what else is out there. Brooklyn, I've seen all these homes. It's been on the market forever. Edgefield, okay, so here's a one that we actually, um, oh, I like Briscoe too. Okay, so here we go. Um, Edgefield and Briscoe, I know, I know both these properties. And so let's do an analyst on both, or let's do some analyzation, analytically inclined conversations. This is a little bit too far west for me. My property that's over there is not performing very well. It's um, <clears throat> after everything's said and done, bills and all the things. It's about eighteen to two thousand dollars a month to to have the property, but it's only pulling in about three thousand to thirty-five hundred dollars a month. <clears throat> Whereas this one over here is about twenty-five hundred dollars a month, and it's pulling in like you know, 10,000 plus. And so what the hell a difference that far away makes, it makes a big difference. <clears throat> so this one's sexy, but I just don't know. We'll still look at it though. Whereas this one has some real difficult, this one is gonna be a difficult one. I know you guys can't see the address, but we can look at pictures though. So this one is a foreclosure, and with foreclosures, you don't really have room to negotiate. Because the bank isn't, uh, the bank doesn't care. It's not very emotional. But look at how long it's been on the market. It's been on the market for over a year. A year. Wah, wah, wah. And uh, <clears throat> so yeah, they uh, they they definitely need um, some help selling this property. But they say that they have multiple offers on it. The client that I was, the client that I was wanting to get this property for, they only were approved for FHA. And since it does have so many contingencies with it and so many issues with the actual structure itself. I don't think it's gonna be passed under an appraisal for an FHA. If you guys don't know what I mean, then in another video we'll talk about why FHA is difficult to buy investment properties. Also, Winneka Heights, uh, where it's located, is a area that is very complicated. Like the, it's a historical district and there's only a certain amount of things that you can do to the property. They restrict you for historical purposes, what you can do and upgrade. And also the neighborhood is very, um, it's very, I wouldn't say Airbnb friendly as much because the neighbors all know each other and they're all part of like, it's basically like a school board. Like it's a bunch of uh, parents that know each other and like to party and do block parties and stuff. And so whenever you're, your neighbors are very important when you're investing in Airbnb and, um, and if they're all up in your business, then you're not going to want that. But look at this house, super remarkable, uh, marketable. And the downside of this property is it has some foundation issues. In the the side of paneling, there's a lot of wood rot on the property. And um, the main thing is that it has no parking. And so it could work as a Airbnb for people that are coming into town that don't have their own cars because they, you know, they're flying into town for something. So they're probably Ubering and stuff, so it's not gonna be that big of an issue. But if you're trying to use this as an event house, then a lot of times the event houses are rented out by people that are nearby, like locals in Dallas. And so they're not going to appreciate that. As you can tell, these pictures are from a year ago and it's not been occupied since. And so this has just deteriorated more and more um, over the past year with nobody taking care of it. The, when you walk the property, these side panelings have definitely rotted a lot. And, um, and it's just the time has set in. If you ever watch Walking Dead, it kind of looks like that. It doesn't look like that. It's actually, it's a, it's a great buy. And, uh, and if they were to accept, you know, less, actually, let's talk about that. It's listed at 299. We were trying to offer 275. And if it was conventional, the agent said that we, they probably would have taken it or it would have been a good, good offer. Um, but in this area of Winneka Heights, there's homes on the same street, like a few houses down that I've recently sold or I was, um, I was a part of a deal 
that there were 490,000. Uh, there's homes on the street that are over 500,000 that look just like this but renovated. So there was a home down the street that was uh, that recently was selling for like 500,000 or more. And so if you just put yourself 50 to 70,000 dollars in this house, say for instance you bought it for listing price at 300,000, then you can take care of most of the issues on the house. The foundation is already warrantable, so you can just use the warranty to fix the foundation. So that's taken care of. The side paneling might cost four to seven thousand dollars at max depending on how bad it is and how much you have to repair it and then just a little things here and there just to fix it up make it look nice and then seventy thousand dollars can do a, a magical amount of stuff fifty thousand dollars probably all you really need to get this thing back and really rock into where it needs to be but still you're at 350 370 and then you still have yourself a good hundred thousand dollars of equity in the house that's insane it's a killer deal and I wish my client was approved for more than just FHA. But there's another client or two out there that I might send this to if this doesn't get the multiple offer contract going on. Is she telling the truth? Comment below if you think she's telling the truth. All right, let's go back to uh, this one. Now this one's a little further west. And this is one that I would also put an offer in on. And this one is 305000 so a little more. It was originally 320000 If I was going to put an offer on this house, I'd probably start at 250000 which I know sounds ridiculous, but I'd start at 250000 the counter, and then I'd settle for, I'd only buy this thing for 260 270 max, just because of the area of town. Uh, other homes in this area, this is at uh, $133 per square foot. It's really important for you to know in your market area uh, how many dollars per square foot things are being sold for. And then 133 is about right. It's a little higher than average, but I'd really like to see that in the, the teens or at least the low 20s, which would get you in that 200,000, 270-ish range or so off the top of my head. I'd have to do the math, but I'm just saying off the top of my head. I haven't done this math yet. Uh, but it does give yourself the four bedrooms and uh, three bathrooms, which is really nice. And they're full bathrooms. And a full bath means they have a shower in it. So that's cool. And, uh, and it's a two-story house. So it's normally two-story houses are really nice to get pictures and marketable on Airbnb. Um, it's been on the market for 132 days. So they're most likely willing to take offers. They're a little less than what they have listed. That's how I like to do it. And either way... I don't really care about any of this stuff in the long run. Whenever I'm looking to buy my own property, I just send out a whole bunch of offers on whatever possibly could work, and I significantly do it under listing. And then once they say yes to it, then I start kind of figuring out what the actual equity play is on it, and then what I can rent it for traditionally and stuff like that. So I just try to see who's in the game. So I throw the ball out there, and whoever passes the ball back, that's when we're like, okay, we're playing a game, let's, let's see. Let's, speaking of, let's see, let's look at the inside of the house. Ooh, they have popcorn ceilings. Sexy. Who doesn't like some popcorn? Um, this property is funky. Kind of like it though, especially for an Airbnb thing. That's gonna, you gotta think of this as Airbnb secondary, whereas the long term traditional renter is primary. Would a long-term renter want to be in this? And I think yes. First thing you'd want to do though is get rid of this. What is up with that? My grandma would like it. Uh, yeah, it all looks good. Mm, needs a little bit of love in this room. But overall, you put yourself eventually down the road. You can do it right when you get the house and move right into it. Or you can put about $20,000 in this house uh, just some love in it and then it'll bring it back to life a lot the backyard looks cool it reminds me of like an, an Austin vibe and um, I mean for you to replace just pull up this wood and replace it with some new nice wood wouldn't be too much work you can do it on a weekend or you can pay someone to do it wouldn't be too expensive or if you want to just power stain it power wash it and then stain it and then at the same time just have someone come out and power wash and stain all the fences to make it look better but if you have the budget then just I always recommend doing a 10 foot fence the 8 to 10 foot fence depending on what your neighborhood allows and that way you have some more um, privacy for backyard and that will allow for guests to be able to have some backyard parties when people are looking at Airbnb properties 
they do really like to look at the backyard because they want to be able to picture themselves back there and having a good time. So you would have like, instead of turning this into a driveway, you can have like a big old area, which is like a pergola back there or like a big old area for people to sit and chill and hang out and have a good time or up here, whatever. You can get fancy and creative with it. So um, that it, those are the two that I would recommend right now putting offers in in the market. The downside about these two and the reason why I'd be so aggressive about them, this one, they both have their downsides. They both need work and they both are in areas that I'm not 100% excited about. <clears throat> this is cool because I have that immediate uh, equity boost and then I do know about this thing right here, this street, this connecting, that's about to get taken away and it's gonna be turned into like a walking path that's like really cool for parks and stuff. Uh, so that's going to be a really cool boost to the area, which is going to bring a lot more revenue to the area as far as the home prices. Um, so I think this is a good buy. I would recommend someone buying this for sure, but FHA is going to be tough. And if we can get this for less than two ninety nine, then you're walking into a house with potentially $100,000 in equity. I just wish that I would stop buying Airbnb properties over this area of town because eventually I'm just competing with myself and my other clients at this point because I've, I've bought, I've sold homes to other clients in this area so it's constantly just, hey, whose house do you want to go to? This one I would buy as well. Uh, it's going to take a little bit more love, but I would not buy it for that price. I would have to buy it for much less for it to make sense profitability wise to go out here. Okay, thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Now we jump into comparing what the, the comps are for other homes in the area. I'm gonna quickly go over that just one second. With the magic of editing, we will do that. And we're back. Okay, so here is the, the ones, there was a lot of good comps for this house, but I only chose this four for these videos, or for this video, and we're not gonna go into super detail. I just want you to have a general idea about how to do a comp in the area. That way, if you ever get a chance, you jump on Zillow and get a general idea, but Zillow is super inaccurate. So the edge field that we are looking at, we're just gonna do the comps for that one, not the, the other one, but we'll just do the edge field one. Uh, but that is right like here and so that's why it has no parking because it's like right there in the corner But we're gonna look at these other homes And so just to give you a general idea about some other options in the area like these are going for 490 This is almost 600,000 and this is 375 and then 523 So this is probably going to be the closest to it even though it's a three-bedroom two-bath And so I would even put that as the comp in the 400,000s or a high 300s um, just because we're missing um, some bedrooms and bathrooms. So uh, let's look at the one that's literally down the street. So Edgefield. Now we're gonna. I'm gonna be showing you these um, just basically because you can see. Actually, let's start with this one. This is the most obvious comp. It's it kind of built the same same kind of generation, same kind of style. And with little minimal work on the outside, you can make the other property, the, the one that we're looking at today, you can make it look kind of like this one. Now the inside definitely has more uh, work done. And so again, we're talking about $50,000, $75,000 at max to bring the other property to, um, to you know above market standards. It'll definitely make it nicer than this one. Now with very minimum work, uh, but same kind of layout, same kind of bedroom sizes. The backyard is significantly nicer, and so that's just something to take note of. So you just have to overcompensate on the other property, make something super cool in the backyard. And you can get a lot of design ideas off of Pinterest or just by being creative in general. And then also, oh my goodness, that looks terrifying. I did not see that picture. Mm, hopefully they don't still live there if you get my drift. Uh, so anyways, let's uh, let's look at the other ones. Okay, on to the next one. So this one was a three bedroom, two bath, 375. Pretty good comp. It's a little nicer than the current one as we just went through. This one is another three bedroom, two bath. It's obviously much nicer, but it's the reason why I bring this up is to show you the ability for homes in this area to be uh, that expensive. And this is a three two. So the four bedroom would even have a potential to be more expensive if you were to put a good amount of money into it. 
That's how I like to solve all my problems in life, is just throw more money at it, and then all things will just go away. Or at least that's what my lawyer said. Okay, so let's look at this one. I've personally toured this one. We had a, I had a, a buyer that was curious about buying this as their first time home, and I was like, 490 for your first time home? What is crazy? But it looks really cool on the inside, really modern. It had the flooring, because it's so old, was kind of like warpy and you could tell throughout the house that it wasn't completely stable, but they did have foundation work done. But on these old pier and beam kind of homes, even if the home is like worked on, it's still going to be all warpy and wobbly. But the home was cool. It even had one room that was just, yeah, this room right here. It's just like, hey, let's go sit there and just hang out in that room. And so um, hopefully that's not where the ghosts hang out at, like in the previous um in previous house this is another cool just sitting room you just have a bunch of little sitting rooms um, I personally like to stand in rooms and just stare off for long periods of time uh, here's a deck that's nice you don't get a lot of decks out here and they built it big deck um, it could be a chicken but I don't think so all right and on to the next uh, property so if you did put a lot of money into that previous property uh, or into the property that's on Edgefield then you could sell it for much more. Let's talk about the first one that is our four bedroom, and this is on Edgefield. Uh, look at this monster right here. It's almost $600,000, and no matter how much money you put into the other home that is currently on the market, this floor plan just is much wider. It's much more open, it's got a nice flow to it, and you know, there's certain things about properties that you just can't fix and so this one is going to be better right off the bat just because of closet space room size and then just the flow of the overall house plus you get that nice backyard and then um, you get this this area right here for your your cars automobiles or whatever you want to call this um, we can try to even put that in the contract like we'll buy the house as long as we also can get this uh, Scooby snack, Scooby Scooby van. What is it? Uh, Scooby Doo. The <laughs> whatever it is, it's the mystery machine, mystery mobile, whatever. Anyways, look at that. Five almost six hundred thousand dollars, and then it's way below um, market price as far as uh, the price per square foot. But that's also you have to factor in the fact that it's so big. If this was two thousand square feet or twenty two hundred square feet, then you'd see this much higher as well um, there's certain there's like a you know there's there's a curve there mm, speaking of a curve it looks like a looks like you drop in right there on your skateboard and go whoosh, and take it out um, okay so this is another four bedroom and it's also gonna have two and a half baths and so two baths with showers and then one that's just for peeing and pooping um, the on the outside of the house it looks really nice good job they definitely took care of this one and they took a lot of time to make this really nice with these uh this wood kind of backsplash i guess you might call it accents um everything in the house looks really nice and modern it's very open as you can tell with a lot of these houses are very boxed in and closed but it just has a big open feel like how nice is that the kitchen goes into the uh, living room and the dining room all flows perfectly well together. Everything's modern, everything's updated. Beautiful, well done house. Way to improve over time. Your original builders will be proud of you. What was that? Oh my goodness. Okay, so nothing you're gonna do on the other house is going to <laughs> make it. You'd have to, you'd have to really install the heck out of, you put a lot of money into redoing your entire bathroom to make it look like that on the other house. But it's possible. Cool. Anything's possible when you put your mind to it. Um, what is that? That's fun. I think it's an aquarium. No. Oh, they have a greenhouse too. What an interesting folk. Um, yeah, so that's that house. So the point in me showing you this is that obviously I don't think the other house is worth $523,000. But it's important whenever you guys are doing comps, whenever you're trying to buy potential homes, Look at the comp. This is the comp, okay? That's what you're basing it off of. And, you know, it's whatever you gotta change because it's nicer, but, it, you know, square footage, stuff like that. Look at what it's actually worth. 
And then once you look at what it's actually worth, then you go and you look at what it could be worth. And that way, whenever you're deciding, should I renovate it, should I flip it, or whatever it is, then you see kind of what it, what it could be worth down the line. Anyways, last thing we're gonna do before we end this video, we're gonna check to see how much rents could be in the area because you don't wanna buy a property and then end up with, um, you don't wanna end up with a property that you cannot rent long term without losing your shirt. You don't want to lose your shirt, that's what I'm trying to say. Unless it's a wild night, unless it's Friday, Saturday, lose your shirt, man. Kick off your shoes, let's get crazy with it. Okay, one second, let me pull this up. Magic at editing, I'm gonna have this all done and we're gonna have all the options ready for you. In three, two, one, and we're back. Okay, so uh, this is how I do my, my, it's very broad because the whole area you have to consider the entire area. You don't narrow it down as much. And so you see what the price for square footage in the area is based on all sorts of factors. So in this case, it's around a dollar per square foot for that kind of house. Over here, it's, let's see, $1.32. And then let's get right up in our marketability area. Come on. Okay, we're going to cut this part out. All right, and so this is gonna be Montclair, and that's gonna be definitely what we can compare the house to, is a hundred, or it's $1.17 per square foot. But I mean, let's just say it's going for $2,600, $2,600. The house that we're looking to buy in this area is pretty much just like this one. This one has a lot more windows. It's nicer, it is nicer. So let's just say, for instance, we can rent the other one out for $2,400. Um, but let's just say 25, whatever, 25. This is currently on the market, which you can't technically use as a comp, but it is still nice to know what people are currently trying to rent it for. It tried to go for 3,000, and then it had to drop down to 28. So it's still kind of the same vibe as one that is active. And so I would say probably still thinking that 25 is probably what's gonna happen. Um, my bet is that at the end of me doing these, that I'm going to assume that 2,500 is the magic number. Let's see what this, 3,500? Oh boy, let's see what happened here. $144 for square foot, this must be an awesome house. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, oh yeah, I can't, I gotta remember that you guys can't see that small. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool house. Big backyard, that just to me looks like you got lawn mow a lot. Okay, yeah, it's a cool house. I mean, I guess there is, uh, there's precedents for, precedents for it being, you can rent it for 3,500. Uh, so I still think that it's safe to say that the edge field that we started with at the original of the video is going to be um, around 2,500 or so per per month and so with it being $2,500 per month even if you're lucky you can possibly see it get up to $3,000 over the next couple of years if all things go well in this neighborhood which it does it is going to increase there's a whole lot of really cool businesses and a lot of cool uh, projects that are working in this area and parks there is going to increase the value and the demand for living in this area Bishop Arch is like super hot right now and so I think that we can go ahead and go on uh, on camera and say 25 to 2600 now if you can do the math actually we're gonna cut we're gonna pretty much end this right here and we're gonna cut back to the camera are you ready for my face are you ready for my face get prepared three two one all right guys so here's my final analysis on this property if I were to buy Edgefield I'd want to buy it conventional and I'd want to buy it for 250 275 Either way, at 300, it's still a killer deal. As you guys can see from the other comps, I can immediately sell it without having to do anything on the property for maybe 350, um, maybe 325 during the summer as long as you take care of minor things. Uh, so already, I think it's a good deal. Downside is that there's no trap or there's no backyard really, and there's no parking. 
So, mm, okay, whatever. Let's talk about long-term strategy. So if you get a mortgage, a 5% down mortgage on this property, then you're, I'm just gonna go out there, depends on all sorts of different things in your state or whatever, the time, the rates, anything like that might change. But let's say for instance, I think it's gonna go for around $2,200 a month for your mortgage. And so if you have your renters pay, long-term renters pay for all the, the utilities and all the fees and everything like that, then you're looking at potentially a couple hundred dollars per month in, uh, in profit, which technically that's a good investment. Uh, property taxes will go up, so you have to consider that, and then you have to pay for those property taxes. And it might not make sense long term, but you also have to increase your rental value per year to make up for those property taxes. Also, you can put a lot of money into this at some point, and then you can increase the property value by like $100,000. And so that's awesome too. I showed you guys how there's a possibility as well. So overall, it's not so much of a risky play. I think it's a good play, um, but am I in love with it? No. Uh, would I put an offer on it? Yes, but um, not if it's FHA. And that is what we're dealing with right now. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this. This was just a really unscripted, just kind of look at what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know that this doesn't apply to a lot of you guys since you're not real estate agents, but at least it gives you a little look at what we do behind the scenes and then how I find my properties. I'll, next video or the couple videos from now, we're gonna go check out Ray's property that he, uh, he just put on the market and he's already seeing a lot of success. That way you can see kind of the whole process and we'll ask him a lot of questions as well. And so, um, yeah, and then as I'm going throughout the process of buying my next property, we'll make sure to walk you through all those steps as well, and then we'll tour the properties and all sorts of fun stuff. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow, hit the notification bell. Try to watch these videos as soon as I post them because the, fast, the more views I get as soon as I post them, then the more YouTube is likely to suggest them to other people, and then therefore I get more views, and therefore I can start doing this more because it's good for my ego. Otherwise, I'm sad, and no one watches my stuff, and so I just stop doing it. So, all right, thank you guys so much for supporting, and I will see you in the next video.